Hey guys, welcome to another read aloud with Miss Earnhardt. Um, today is a very special day because number one, I got to see a lot of you today as I gave you your materials. And number two, today is Micah's birthday. So can we all give Micah a happy, happy birthday with the customary cha-cha-cha. Is you ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you, cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday to you, cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday, dear Micah. Happy birthday to you, cha-cha-cha. Ooh la la, stick your head in hot lava. Hi-ya, eat more chicken. Thank you so much for celebrating with us for Micah on his very special day. Now, we have been talking about the life cycle of a frog this week and so I wanted to read to you a fiction fake book because this is a book that you are able to pick up at any of your libraries when they finally open and you are also able to find these online as well and it is a series and I bet you know what series it is. It is the Froggy books, and I love the Froggy books. I think he is so silly. This is Froggy's Sleepover. So if you would sit back and relax, and this is Froggy's Sleepover. I'm gonna move y'all over just a little bit. There we go. And it is written by Jonathan London and illustrated by Frank McKetsowitz. Again, I apologize if I mispronounce these last names because my gracious, thank you. Thank you for your grace. So here we go, Froggy's Sleepover. Have you ever had a sleepover before? I did when I was little. I loved them. It was Friday and school was out. Froggy flopped home from the school bus, flop, flop, flop singing, hooray, hooray, it's Friday, Friday. I'm going to Max's for a sleepover. He is so excited. That's great, said Froggy's mother, and she gave him a plate of chocolate fly cookies. This is your first sleepover. Are you nervous? Who, me? Of course not, said Froggy, and he hopped up and flopped to his room. Flop, flop, flop. He pulled his big sack from his closet. Slam! He stuffed in his sleeping bag. Sloof. He squeezed in his pillow. Poof! Slapped in his pajamas. Puff! Shoved in a pair of underwear. Boom! There, he said, and flopped outside, dragging his sack behind him. Whoosh! Froggy! Yelled, called his mother. What? Did you forget your huggy? Oh man, when you go sleeping at a sleepover, you need to make sure you have everything. Oops, said Froggy, and flopped back inside. Flop, flop, flop. I found it, he yelled. It was in the cookie jar. Slam! Then out the door he went, dragging his sack behind him. Slump! Froggy! called his mother. What? Did you forget your toothbrush? Oops, said Froggy and flopped back inside. Flop, flop, flop. I found it, yelled Froggy. It was in my toy chest. Is that a place to keep a toothbrush? That's kind of gross. Hey, don't forget to brush, said his mother. I know, said Froggy. Then off he went to Max's, dragging his sack behind him. Shloop. Making sure y'all can see the pictures. At Max's, he dumped everything out on the floor, shlump, rolled out his sleeping bag, shluff, and fluffed up his pillow, fluff. Okay, said Froggy, I'm ready for bed. But Froggy, said Max, it's only four o'clock. 
So they waited until after dinner. Then they crawled into their sleeping bags. Wait, said Froggy, jumping up. I forgot to brush my teeth. And we know that frogs, most frogs, do have teeth. So that's kind of a true fact about frogs in a not in a fiction fake book. Don't be a baby, said Max. This is a sleepover. You don't have to brush your teeth. Oh no. Is Max teaching Froggy to not do what his mom said? Froggy crawled back to his bag. Wait, said Froggy, jumping up. I need my Huggy to go to sleep. Sleep, said Max. Who's going to sleep? I can. We can tell scary stories and have pillow fights all night long. Froggy slipped back into his bag and Max told a story that made Froggy skin crawl. Now it's your turn, said Max, but there was a weird screeching out sounds and scary shapes hung in the shadows like ghosts. Oh no, that would be a little bit too scary for me. I have a better idea, said Froggy. What, said Max? Let's go to my house for a sleepover. When they got back to Froggy's, they tiptoed inside in the dark. Quiet, quiet. Ooh, how do you think Froggy is feeling right about now? Do you think he's being brave or do you think he's a little bit scared? Yeah, I think so. Crash! Froggy bumped into a lamp and knocked over the goldfish bowl. Splash! Froggy! yelled his mother. What's all the ruckus? She flipped on the light. Oops! cried Froggy, looking more red in the face than green. We decided to sleep here instead. Oh, Froggy, said his mother, I thought you wanted to sleep at Max's. I did, cried Froggy, but um, I was hungry and you make the best popcorn. Can you make us some, please? Okay, you little munchkin, said his mom, pop, pop, pop. She made them some buttery popcorn, then went back to bed. Plump, plump, plump. Froggy and Max were having a wild pillow fight. Good night, pudding heads, called Froggy's mom. I hope they go to sleep soon, groaned Froggy's dad. Me too, moaned Froggy's mom. Froggy's parents were snoring like horses when Froggy's mom heard a sound. She opened, her eyes popped open, and she flicked on the light. Max was standing by the bed. I have a tummy ache, he said. I want to go home. So back they went to Max's house, dragging their sacks behind them. Shloop. <laughs> Poor guys. But there were still weird sounds and scary shadows there. So they went back to Froggy's. But Max wanted his pillow, so they went back to Max's. But Froggy wanted pink lemonade, so back and forth they went. Shloop, shloop, shloop. At last, they fell asleep at Max's house at nine o'clock in the morning. Because they're finally sleeping. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this book today and happy, happy birthday to Micah. Guys, I hope that you have a great start to your week. 
please make sure that you get outside in your backyard if it's okay and get some sun in you and everyone stay nice and safe. Love you. Bye-bye.